We are on our 10th study of the word evil found in the Bible. And it looks like, Lord willing, we're going to finish part one. And part one is adjectives describing the description word that we've seen of evil. And we've got 23 categories to go through. And this is, we're going down with number one. And we've done introduction. And we're going to find the characteristics of adjectives. We're going to look at, should finish up with 34 adjectives of the word evil. And let me run back this real quick. Get the videos, get the YouTubes, get the SoundCloud, SoundCloud on this study because you got to hear it all. And I've said that over and over because you can't just listen to one video and get it because you're going to miss evil. So what we have is we have evil animals, number one. Number two, we have an evil congregation. Number three, we have an evil place. Number four, we have an evil generation. Number five, we have an evil diseases. Number six, is evil men of Shechem. Seven, we have evil doers. Eight, we have evil man. Nine, we have evil doers, the congregation. Ten, we have uh, thoughts that are evil. Eleven, we have evil women. Can't leave them out. 12, we have evil men, plural. We had e evil man, evil men. 13, evil people. 14, we have uh, evil as in naughty. Naughty as in evil. 15, we have evil fruit. 16, we have an adulterous generation, evil. 17, we have an evil servant, evil employee. 18, we have evil spirits. 19, we have deeds that are evil. 20, we have the evil of works. The world's works are evil. And then number 21, we have... Minds are evil affected. 22, we have e inventors of evil things. 23, we have evil communications. 24, we have present evil world. 25, we have uh, evil con conspicuous. <laughs> I guess every time I try to say that word, I mess it up. 26, we have evil strife 27 we have seducers shall wax worse with evil men there's that men again and the evil there was seducers 28 we have the evil of our conscience evil conscience 29 we have evil thoughts plural and then 30 we have unruly evil the tongue now we pick up first peter 4 14 number 31 again this this list here is not all i may have missed something we're not going to look at all the words of evil in the bible we're going to look at enough of them and evil is a word that it's a sin or it may be a consequence of sin, or it may be a sin and a consequence of sin. And going over in videos past, and you got to get them all, especially in the introduction. And we're looking at 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 14. And if you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. So, 
When people badmouth you, mock you, irritate you, give you a hard time because you are a Christian, you are doing a Christian thing that the Bible tells us to do. Let me give you my, my illustration. I'm a street preacher. <clears throat> I'm evangelist on, on the street, a street preacher and passing out gospel tracts and holding signs. Well, throughout the many, many, many years we've been doing this as a family, I've had people cuss me out with every foul language they can think of. I've had people get an argument, you know, come up in my face and start an argument. I've had people tell me where I can go. They had tell me, you know, tell with their middle finger, tell me to look up. But, you know, I don't see anything. And, you know... I've heard Satan rules, Satan wins. I've heard, uh, you know, the Bible's written by man. I've heard it all. Well, not all of it. I mean, still more to come. I learned something last night. But, and when people speak bad of you because you live for Christ, by the biblical standard, by the biblical standard, not just, oh, I'm a, I'm a Christian, I let my light shine, and, no, you, you got to live according to the Bible, because the Bible says all they that live godly shall suffer persecution. So when you live the Bible standard way of living, notice it says evil spoken. When they mock you or sass you, whatever they do, God takes it personally. It's not you. It's God that they're attacking. And in Acts chapter 9, verse 4, Jesus confronts Paul and says, Why persecutest thou me? When did Paul ever persecute Jesus? No, he was persecu persecuting Christians. And when you persecute Christians, you're persecuting the Christian, Christ. And Peter says, Happy are you. Peter ended up in jail many times for the word of God. And he didn't end up in jail for a drunkard. He didn't end up in jail as a thief. He didn't end up in the church for causing, you know, disturbances. He went, did I say church? I meant jail. He didn't go to jail because of the civil disorder. He went to jail because of the word and for Jesus. Now check our Bibles, go to John 15, 18. The Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 18. Now you got to get it right. You can't think, oh, I'm suffering for Christ and you're being an idiot. Okay? John chapter 15, verse 18. If the world hates you, know it hated me before it hated you. Okay, so... If you're going to live godly, you're going to do according to the Bible standard without being a jerk. Now, they'll accuse you of being a jerk. But be a jerk for Jesus Christ according to Bible standards. Now, I know people preach on the street and they go out there and, and they walk by with a cigarette. They bash me. Oh, smoking. you're going to go to hell smoking. Oh, you're wearing a short shirt. Oh, you're whoring that. That's a jerk. I know of a church that went against my family. We started a public ministry. And there are a few times the cops told us, you know, you can't be. And we, we, we went through it and, and talked to the lawyers. And I thought we were in the right, so we stayed. I know a church on the other side of town didn't work with us. But, you know, they had to do their own ministry. They will not have anything to do with the Haywards. And they went in a public place. And they had signs and preaching. They told them, you can't be here. And it was showed to them that they were actually on private property. And they were warned. And they didn't look into it. And they went back there preaching, holding their signs on And they were arrested. And it was a private property. And they were warned. Oh, we were arrested for Jesus Christ. No, you're arrested for being an idiot. Okay, there's a big difference. Many people think they're they're persecuted for Christ. No, you're you're a jerk. You're doing it wrong. You're not doing it right. 
So we have an evil speaking of, of Christians. They talk bad about you. You don't get the promotion. You find stuff on your work desk that ought to not be. <laughs> you know, look at those magazines we put on this desk here. That Christian, huh? And they set you up for things. They try to get you in trouble. And they 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 badmouth you. And you're not invited to the party. You're, and you're, you're an outcast in the family. That's evil spoken up. And I've had that with my own family. You know, how he, 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 even Christians. I, I don't know what's wrong with stuff. He takes it. No, I take it biblically. And you ought to be living like that. So 1 John chapter 3 verse 12. 1 John 3.12. The bird's been acting up today. I apologize. 1 John 3.12. We have number 32. Number 31 was evil speaking of. Number 32, 1 John 3.12. By the way, we're looking at the Bible. I'm reading from a King James Bible. We're getting more from the Bible than you're getting stories. Okay? I'll give you some story when it relates to the Bible, but we're getting Bible. You want stories, go to the library. I'm going to teach the Bible truth. 1 John 3, 12. Not as Cain. We know Cain was the son of Adam and Eve, who was of that wicked one, the devil, and slew his brother, murder. Wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil. And his brother's righteous. So, what were the works of Cain? According to Genesis 4, 1, verse 3 and 8. Let's go over there because we want to see what the Bible says. Because, you know, there's no deceivers out there. You know, you can take them for their word. Not, no. <laughs> let's see what the Bible says. Genesis 4, 1. Show you the Bible. I'm not in a rush. Okay, we may finish this today. We got, I think we got four or five things to do. It. If we run out of time, we run out of time. We do it next week. I'm not in a rush. Genesis four one. And Adam knew Eve, his wife. She conceived and bare Cain. There he is, and said, "I have gotten this man from the Lord." And she again bare his his other his brother. Abel. And Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. In the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought forth the fruit of the ground and offering unto the Lord. And Abel also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof, blood. And the Lord had respect unto, unto Abel and to his offering, but to Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very raw, and his countenance fell. So what is this? It's a salvation by works and not by blood. Did you hear what I said? I said it's a salvation by works and not by blood. Everything Cain brought to God was of his hands. Getting in the dirt, handling the shovel, handling the hole, whatever tools he had. Picking the crops was of his works. Cain went into that, that garden and said, Oh, well, that tomato plant, that stay. That one looks sick. I'm going to pull that one. Uh, these flowers off this apple tree has got to go. Too many flowers. Won't, you know, the fruit won't be right. Cain Nick picked his religion of his salvation by his works. Abel said that this, this is the first offering. This is the first lamb. This is the first ox. This is God's. And it has no blemish. That's the only thing Abel would look at. There's no blemish. And as far as I can tell, this is the cleanest, most healthiest animal. The first one I have. I'm going to slay it. And I'm going to offer the fat in the blood. And God says through John, the apostle John, that was beloved of Jesus Christ, that Cain's religion were evil. Cain brought to God religion, the fruits of his own hand. 
Cain's religion is works by righteousness and not by blood. And when you come to God without the blood of Jesus, the Apostle John, who is beloved of Jesus Christ, that laid upon the breast of Jesus, says, in your works without blood, that's evil. How dare you think that your religion is going to get you into the gates of heaven through Peter, whatever your religion teaches, when the Bible says that that is evil? That's why the Bible is removed from religion. That's why religions have traditions. They have missiles. They have prayer books. They have their own writings. They have their own instruction because you can't do the Bible because the Bible would say we are evil. How dare God call me when I'm doing evil? And Cain got wroth. So when you, I deal with Catholics and Jehovah Witnesses. They get mad at me because I am telling them that their religion of Cain, their self-righteousness, what they do is evil, and that comes from a Bible, plain and simple. So number 32 is evil is religion and any salvation works by mankind. It's evil. Have you not listened to what everything has been? E evil has not been good. But evil can be good. You say, Stalin, you're confusing me. That's why you got to get all the videos. That's why I'm doing this study about evil. The, the main course of this study is for the very fact, let me come over here real quick. Here's the main fact. Three verses that started this, this study. Job 2.10. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What, shall we not receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? And all this Job did not sin with his lips. Isaiah 45, 7. I form the light, God says. I create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Lamentations 3, 8. Out of the mouth of the Most High proceeds not evil and good. That's why we're doing this study. Because somebody I know accused God of being evil. And I'm going to say, yes, God does evil. But does God sin? No. Evil is a consequence of sin. When we sin, God brings evil. It's not sin. Sometimes the evil God brings is to get us right and to get back. It's a chastisement. And when people badmouth you because of Christ, that's bad. And when people come to God with a religion that's not by the blood, that's bad. That's a sin. That's a sin. It's a sin to come up to a man who, whether he's passing on a gospel track, reading you the Bible, preaching on the street, or giving a, a, a Sunday school or a prison uh, Bible study. You mock him. What you're doing is evil, and that's a sin. 2 John 1 11. 2 John 1 11. Second John 1 11. And he that biddeth him God speaks. Uh, have a good day. God bless you. Hope you prosper. Be well. Be happy. Is a partaker of his evil deeds. Now let's read further. Let's look at verse 7. Shall we? For many deceivers are entered into the world. you believe that? <laughs> I believe that more and more every day I'm living. I mean, with this thing with coronavirus, I don't know who to believe. I get the media, I get the politicians, I get the, 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 the medical doctors, I get the Christians, I get Bible-believing Christians. Just, Lord God, please, I don't want to be sick. And 
I'm living for you. Please give me a wife and please don't get me sick. I don't like being sick. But there are many deceivers in the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Can you name one? Can you think of somebody who said that Jesus Christ, uh, he may have walked the planet. But you know somebody who says Jesus Christ is not God. Oh, gee, I wonder who they are. This is a deceiver and antichrist. Do you know 144,000 people that are over a billion today that, uh, that go into your house and say, hey, you know, we're at 144,000 and we got to prepare you for the kingdom of Jehovah. And they're antichrist. And I'm talking about the Jehovah Witnesses. And I have read the Bible about the Jehovah Witness. It says 144,000. I say, well, what number are you? What do you mean? Isn't there like a billion of you guys? Yeah, worldwide. All right. Guess what? 144,000 and you're a billion. Number two, which tribe are you from? Don't say Dan or Ephraim either. What do you mean what tribe? Well, the Bible says 144,000 are going to be out of the 12 tribes of Israel. No Dan, no Ephraim. But Levi and Joseph mentioned, uh, which tribe are you? I don't know. Deceiver. Okay, number two. It says men. And if you're talking to a woman, are you a man? Uh, you got to be careful with that question today. You got to be very quick because there are people who don't know who they are today. Isn't that ridiculous? But. You got to be careful because you can't really use that statement. Because if you ask a woman, well, are you a man? She may say yes. I'm like, oh, boy, blew it. This is the devil slip. I, I would say to, Joe, to a woman, are you a man? Now, in the olden days, they would say, well, no, I'm a woman. I'd be afraid what they say today. But just trying to help you out witnessing to these people. All right. The Bible says, you take them over there, it says 144,000 men, not women. You're a deceiver. What am I up? Number three or four? Do you have children? I'll ask a man or a woman. Do you have children? They'll say yes. Or I would say, are you married to a man or a woman? Goes, yeah, we're married. I would say, do you have sexual relations with your spouse? Well, yes. The Bible says there are 144,000 of the tribes of Israel. They are males and they are virgins. And then they get upset at me. <laughs> Because I tell them the Bible. And then I turn around and say, you're an antichrist. You're not up to 144,000. You're the antichrist, according to scriptures. Look to yourself that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. And when it comes to the deceivers of religion, whoever they are, there's a possibility we can lose a reward. A gold, a silver, a precious stone. I don't want to lose it. For an occult or religion. We got to be careful how we deal with them. Whosoever transgresses and abides not in the doctrine of Christ, the teaching of Christ, has not God. He that abides in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. So if I transition myself into a religion, and they don't keep the teachings of Jesus Christ, who said, "I and the Father are one." What did it just say? You're not of God. You don't have God. God has departed. Now you can be a saved Jehovah Witness and God has departed from you. Because you have gone to say that Jesus is not God. And there are saved Christians in the Jehovah Witness movement, but God has departed from them. And you can be the same thing as a Catholic. You can go, oh, I'm going to go into the Catholic religion and that mass is, is the body and is the blood of Jesus Christ. And God's like, that's not my teaching. Don't call no man your father. I'm going to call that guy a father. And God's like, okay, I'm gone. You're saved. I'm gone. And if you apostolate anybody into those religions, you lost rewards and you gained wood, hay, or stubble. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, 
Receive him not in your house. Does that sound familiar of the religion of Jehovah Witnesses? They come to your... I got scripture all over my car. I got scripture in my front door. I got that Jesus is God. And I got a bumper sticker on the back of my car and said, yo, Jehovah Witness, Thomas said, my Lord, my God. And they still come to the door. Not recently, though. Tracy would love to say, hey, the Jehovah Witnesses are coming. And she did. She loved that. I loved it, too. Sometimes I get my shoes on. I go start walking down the street with them so I can tell my neighbors about these perverts. But they stopped coming here. For he that abideth, for he that biddeth him Godspeed, have a good day, goodbye, is a partaker of evil deeds, and you become part of that movement. Now, remember we talked about Cain and his religion of self-righteousness, of self-doing things that I can do without the blood? Here's a religion that you can partake and say, have a good day. Thank you. You say, Stalin, what do you tell him? I tell him, get your butt off my, my, my driveway. I deal with him out in, the, out in the driveway. I don't even let him come in my stoop. I say, you need to go. Bye. I say, oh, we're going to the next house? And they'll be like, we mean we. I'm going to grab my Bible. I'm gonna... So the context is when you're speaking good to a religious person, you are part of If you make that Jehovah Witness, that Catholic or whoever has come to you, you make them feel good and you don't rebuke them. Brother, sister, you just lost gold, silver, and precious stones. If you are not able, if you have not been taught in dealing with the cults that come to your door, this, this, no, you can't say it's good. See what I mean? See? No. And close the door. If you're not able to handle, if, if you're not strong enough to, to deal with them and not lose, close the door and say no. Did not Jesus say yay or nay and anything else is sin? Never leave a Jehovah Witness or anybody a goodbye, God bless, have a good day, etc. Godspeed. That's an old English word for bye. Have a good day. Hope you get more prosperities. Hope my neighbors will listen to you. And you don't want that. Any person evangelizing in a way of wickedness and promoting against the gospel of Jesus Christ and the very person of Christ himself is not one to send off with a blessing of goodness. And the Bible warns against it. Look at Mark 9, 38. And I, I have to, there's been times I've accidentally said something like that to a Jehovah Witness. That's good. Oh, style, repent. I know, need to. Need to. You got to be careful. You make them feel good without rebuke. And you know, you know what the world would say? Just love them. All right, go ahead and love them and make them feel good. Make them feel happy and then lose a blessing. Go ahead. I advise you not to. 938. And John answered him, saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name. And he followed us not. We forbade him, because he followed not us. And Jesus said, Forbid him not, for there is no man which can do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of him. There's an evil there. Someone's speaking bad about him. Now, I don't think John is. I think John is like, you know, Lord, John doesn't know. But somebody else says, like we learned earlier, Yo, you think you're a Christian, huh? You think you're a follower of Christ doing that? What do you think you are? For he is not against us is on our part. For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name. Now I've had people give me plastic bottles of water. In the ministry, you guys look hot and they offer us water. Because you belong to Christ. Ye belong to Christ. Whereas he shall not lose his reward. So, 2 Corinthians 11.4. 
You got to be careful. There will be people out there who will help you because you are in Christ. There are people out there who are not for Christ. 2 Corinthians 11, 4. Now get this. For if he that cometh preaches, preaches another Jesus. You know there's another Jesus out there? There's a Jesus who's not God, Jehovah Witness movement. There's a Jesus that you're a cannibal. You eat his body, you drink his blood, Roman Catholics. There's a Jesus that came to North America, the Mormons. There's a Jesus that wants you to kill people and shed their blood because they won't believe in you, Muslims. And there's a peace-loving, fruitcake kind of Jesus. Oh, he's just so great. He's just so wonderful. He couldn't eat. Yeah, that's a fruitcake. <laughs> Whom we have not preached. This is why you study and show thyself approved unto God that you that you rightly divide. You got to have that Jesus that Paul preaches, and that's not the preaching of the Catholics, and that's not the preaching of Jehovah Witnesses or the Mormons or any occult. Or if he receive another spirit, <laughs> gee, I wonder what the charismatic moment is that, which you have not received, or another gospel. Which you have not not accepted, he might well bear with them. So with that, another Jesus, another gospel, another spirit, and if you partake of their deeds, you may lose a reward. I had two instances in my family. Where a Catholic was getting married and a Catholic had died. I won't go in their church. I won't go in their church. And my wife at that time, Lisa, understood. Because if I'm a born again Bible believing Christian, right? People know I am, right? I mean, back in Connecticut, I preached on the streets, I was public ministry, the grocery store, everywhere, and I got here. What are they going to think if I come out of a Catholic church, even though it's a marriage or even though it's, it's a funeral? Well, he must approve of them. Does not the Bible say abstain from all appearance of you? Well, my family don't like it. That's tough. You, you got a preacher here is without excuse. Because God doesn't take any excuses. It's just as bad for me to come out of a package store to use the potty to come out of a Catholic church with a wedding or a, or a funeral. And you do know the Catholics, I know because I grew up Catholic, that at the funeral and at the wedding, you partake of the Mass. I Well, I didn't do the Mass. That's not what they saw outside. And Paul says, if, if, if there's divisions, you got to walk with right. P he rebukes Peter because he, Peter would not eat with Gentiles when the when the Jews came. We got to do that with right. Now we had a ministry back in Norristown, Connecticut, and there was a, there was a Catholic church there, and it is their Easter. Easter's not Christian. It's not Bible. It's pagan. Their Easter service. And they had the passion walk. And they had some guy dress up like Jesus, walk up and down the street with a cross, and everybody all dressed up. You know, I gotta have a party and everything. We stood in the gutter of the street. We were going to stay. We had right to be on this sidewalk, but we stood in the gutter of the street. We didn't even want you to even think we were part of that, but we stood there passing out gospel tracts. We didn't go in the property. We didn't go in the building. We didn't go in the crowd. We stood in that one spot and we stayed in that one spot and you seen the pictures. We got the gospel out. He said, what did you say to him? Here, 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 here. Now have a good day. Now see you later. Here, 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 here. And when you do that, you know, you pass it out. Here, here, here. Something about Jesus Christ. Can I give you something about the Bible? Can I give you something about Jesus Christ? You got to be careful. Did not Jesus say in Matthew, every idle word that a man, any man, saved, lost, Gentile, Jew, shall give an account thereof? And if Jesus said every idle word, what will happen to the idle words when we're speaking to people of an occult that 
You gotta watch this. Yeah, yeah, that's that. James said that's the end of the hell. I think many of our Christians are going to realize we're going to find a lot more wood, hay, and stubble than we think because of this mouth. Now, if you don't believe that, then you haven't studied the Bible. Last place. Revelation chapter 2, verse 2 for adjectives. Next week, Lord willing, we'll pick up number two, bad deeds. And as you turn to Revelation 2, I'll tell you a little bit about next time, Lord willing. Hopefully the Lord calls us home. But a bad deed when an action is committed that is wrong. And the object lesson of evil and the impact. That's what we'll start next time. And that has how many? Let's run ahead real quick. I'll get into Revelation chapter 2. Give you some time to get. But that has that has four. So we'll be able to hopefully Lord willing do that in one study. Then number three, coming up after that, we got capital and criminal punishment. After that, we got good is evil and evil is good. Ooh. Tell your friends, your neighbors, share this, get it out. All right, Revelation chapter 2, verse 2. Here we go. I know thy works. Ooh. See why people want Santa Claus? I, I grew up in Santa Claus. And if you're a bad boy, I still got gifts. <laughs> I was a bad boy. I don't know if my mom knew half the stuff I was bad at. I know she, mo she knew most what I didn't know she knew, but she didn't know it all. Santa Claus still gave me presents. Jesus Christ and God the Father and the Holy Spirit are not Santa Claus. And they're making a list. They don't need to check it twice. And to find out who's naughty or not. The Bible said the eyes of the Lord in every place behold the evil and the good. Why evil first? Because that's what we're prone to. There's only one thing that will get my sins off that list of God. Is if I confess my sins, he's faithful and just to forgive, forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. If I sin and it's unconfessed, I get wood, hay, or stubble. Santa used to give it a lump of coal. I know thy work, God says, Jesus says, thy labor. So he knows what you're doing. He knows what your heart and patience. I wish that wasn't in there. And how thou canst not bear them uh -oh. which are evil. Okay, there it is. Thou hast tried them. Who? The ones that are evil. Which say they are apostles and are not and has found them liars. Oh! Oh, you see, so, you see the apostles, they had to see the resurrected Christ. They had to be baptized with John's baptism. There was another one, I can't remember what it was. You have to see the risen of Christ. You have to be baptized with John. There's a third one. I forget what it was in the book of Acts. That would not be in 2020. No. The Apostolic, the Apostolic Church. I can't say that properly. There are people out there who claim to be the apostles or of the apostles. There's a man sitting in Italy who claims to be an apostle going all the way back to their rock, Peter. What's evil? People who imposter themselves to be an apostle. And you will find them on TV. You'll find them all over the place. Uh, I am of the apostles of Jesus Christ. So evil is pretending to be someone they're not. They pretend to be ambassadors of God or the people of God, and they're not. Boy, we've been finished up with religion here, haven't we? Here they call themselves apostles in apostolic succession. 
is a method whereby the ministry of the Christian church is held to derive from the apostles by a continuous succession, which was usually being associated with the claim that the succession is through a series of bishops. Gee, I wonder what they I wonder what church that is. You see, Peter laid hands on Joe, Joe laid hands on Mo, and Mo laid hands on Shemp, and Shemp laid hands on Larry, and Larry laid hands, <laughs> you got what I'm saying, Mo, Larry, Curly. And the monkey that saw no, and the monkey that didn't see no, and the monkey that wouldn't hear. <laughs> and through all the successions of the years of Peter, Guess what? You have an occult. So churches that claim some form of apostle, Episcopal apostolic secession, <laughs> dating back to the apostles or leaders from the apostolic era, include, ready, the Roman Catholic Church. The Eastern Orthodox Church, the Oriental Orthodox Church, the Church of the East, the Anglican Communion, some Lutheran churches, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints, Old Catholics, and other independent Catholics, <laughs> just Catholics in point. The true church of Jesus Christ in the in chapter 2 has found these people to be liars. And John writes through Jesus Christ, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, they are liars. The churches I just mentioned to you are liars and are evil, according to the scriptures. So why would they have a book of Mormon? Why would they have a missile? Because the Bible calls them for what they are. Evil. And wicked. And we've concluded here, and in probably other places, and I apologize if I didn't get your favorite evil, but we'll, we we'll, may hit it somewhere. But that is 34 adjectives. And I gave you the list when we started. And concluded this now, 34 times, an adjective. And I think we hit every species of man, male and female. We hit individuals, we hit groups, we hit congregation, we've hit religions. We hit even the animal kingdom. We hit diseases. We, we're surrounded all by evil. Are you not wanting to go to heaven? Are you not wanting to go to glory, to New Jerusalem, where there will be no... Stolly, why do you want to go home? Why do you want to go to New Jerusalem? Because there's no evil. I'm telling you, if the Lord didn't want to use me more, i say, Lord, take me home. And i tell the Lord, if you're not going to use me, take me home. This world is evil. It's wicked. And you have use for me, so I'm here another day. For me right now, evil is uh, I'm I'm lonely and I don't have a wife. And I'm like, Lord, let me enjoy. Let me have the, the happiness. We're surrounded by evil. This virus is evil. And it's being used by evil people who want to make a profit and make something out of nothing, though it is something. And I hope through 10 videos so far, three of them introduction, and, thir and over 34 description adjectives of evil. I hope you learn to see. And I hope you will come to God that, Lord, I'm a sinner. You know what Stiley has talked about, what Stiley has gone through, I have done some of those evils. Now, we haven't done them all, but, you know, some of those evils. 
And I'll tell you, if you're saved, you need to you need to get God to repent of those sins. You've got to confess your sins. And he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Don't let the sins of evil show up at the judgment seat of Christ. We don't know when Christ is coming, and he may come any moment. Any day, any week, any month, any year, Christ is coming. Repent of your evil. And if you have never trusted on Jesus Christ, and you are of the religions or no religion that I have spoken of, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. To God's glory. And I thank you very much. And Lord willing, uh, every night, 7 p.m., we have our family Bible study. We're going through uh, the book of Psalms. It's Psalm 68 tonight. Lord willing, Tuesdays we do um, the biblical truth of our hymns, usually in the afternoon. Thursdays, Lord willing, about this time, we do the study right now of evil. I'm hoping to start another study about Genesis. And we're going to rip into that one when we get to it. I'll get people mad on that one. But thank you for listening. I share. And I have one person say about volume. I'm going to look up to see what we can do about the volume and make things more improved. So may God be blessed and God get the glory. And when you make God happy, God will make you happy. <laughs>